grab the total compensation calc sheet. Okay, now this is just me being a boss, so you're gonna humor me for a minute, all right? Okay, because I want I want you, part of what we're trying to teach Nick and Hunter is how to think like business owners. Give us a total compensation sheet. I'm not sure you sent it to you. Oh, I didn't send you guys that one? All right, we'll do, we'll do the math real quick. Okay, so you're, you guys are gonna get one of these sheets when you do your annual skill review and we talk about your raise, okay? <clears throat> but what we wanna do is we wanna make sure you guys understand what your actual total compensation is. Um, and that's important for a couple of reasons. One is there's some things you guys don't see as employees. And the other reason is we, we, we're trying to be fair. And so whether or not you're on the health insurance makes a huge difference. And so I wanna explain that for everybody, okay? Okay, so let's take Mr. Hart for a minute. Okay, we're gonna do two versions of Mr. Hart. We're gonna do the single carefree version, okay? And then we're gonna do the married with children version, all right? Thanks. Okay, so he's got a family I quite like it. Okay. All right, so this let's say this theoretical <laughs> let's say this theoretical Austin Hart makes twenty four dollars an hour. Okay, so that's his, what we call his base wage. Okay, his base wage is twenty four dollars an hour. Okay, now how much money does Austin think he makes? Thinks he makes twenty four dollars. He an thinks hour. he makes twenty four dollars an hour, but he really makes a lot more than that, and I'm gonna explain why. Okay, now. As a general rule, if you're a full-time employee, do I squawk about anything under five hours of OT? No. You can work five hours a week of OT every week, and I'd actually be tickled pink. Because that after you have now, I don't make you guys work OT, but after you've reached your 40, anything after that's basically gravy for the company. Because I've covered your overhead costs. Right? So let's just, as, as a general rule for these calculations, we're going to say, hey, we give you guys the opportunity to work five hours of OT. Okay, so we got to figure out what is that worth. So you take five times five hours of OT times 24 times 1.5. Can somebody do that math for me, please? So five times 24 times 1.5. That's the dollar value. Yeah, 180. Okay, so that's 180. Okay, so now divide that by a 45 hour week and that tells you what that's worth an hour. Four. Okay, four dollars an hour. Why does my wife get all puckers when she sees overtime? Is it cheap? Nope. So there's a really easy way around here to get a four dollar an hour raise. What is it? Work some OT. Work that five hours. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, here's where it really, where rubber really hits the road. By the way, um, most of my full time employees are getting somewhere between one and five hours a week OT. You know, Nick and Hunter regularly have two or three hours of OT on their timesheets, and Cameron does, Cameron and Angela do too, because they're working in the field. Okay, so now, single Austin is not on the health insurance. Okay, when, and when I say, it, first of all, I hate the word insurance, it's health benefits. And when I say that, it's, it's everything. It's medical, dental, vision, life, okay? All right, so, uh, single Austin is not on that. Okay, so we're gonna we're just gonna put health health benefits here. Okay, so what's that cost for the company? A whole lot of money. Yeah, it's zero for single for carefree Austin Hart. Okay. All right, now let's go across the board here, and let's say Austin is just married, no kids yet. Okay. Now the good news is you guys are young, and so you know what that means about your health insurance. Cheap. It's cheap, okay? So Brian cost me a fortune. No, he really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Young people are relatively cheap to insure. Okay, so for Austin and his wife, if Austin got, if he gets married next year, him and his wife, okay, the monthly premium, does anybody want to guess? Nick, not you, because you already know. What's my monthly premium for Austin? If, if, if Elaine came in tomorrow and wanted on the health insurance with Nick, what would it cost me a month? It's like 1000 Okay, and it's it's a little more than that. Let's say it's probably twelve fifty. Now it's a little higher for me and Monique because me and Monique are getting old, right? But for you guys, it'd be about twelve fifty. Okay, so let's figure out what that is an hour. So take twelve fifty divided by one hundred and sixty hours a month, and that will tell us the hourly cost. You guys are gonna crap a break. 
Seven. Seven, seven bucks. bucks. Yeah, it's usually between seven and ten dollars an hour, depending on the employee. Okay. All right, now the last thing we're going to plug in here is PTO. We're not going to count profit sharing because it hasn't happened. So PTO, you guys get 25 days of PTO a year. Okay, so somebody get their calculator out. We want to figure PTO. Okay, so we need to take 25, 25 times 32, or no, I'm sorry, 24. 25 times 24 times 8. That gives us the total PTO cost for the year. 4,800. Okay, now divide that by 2080. That will give you the hourly value of that. About two. Two dollars? Two point three. Two point three? We'll just call we'll round it down to two. Okay, so hourly is two. Okay, now there's one last thing that I get to put on here that you guys don't know about. But I pay payroll taxes on every hour you work. You pay taxes, and then I get to pay taxes too. Okay, and that's roughly between 5 to 10%, so let's just average it, let's say 7%. Okay, so let's total this up. For a carefree Austin, we got 24 and 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30, so we got $30. Okay, plus we're going to say $1.50 is 5%. We'll just call it 5% to make the math easy. Okay, so what is carefree Austin's actual hourly rate? Thirty-one fifty. Okay. Now, so that's what he's costing you. That's not necessarily his take home. Oh, it's absolutely not his take home because he's got to pay taxes, yeah. right? Okay, but that's the number that goes in the band, folks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to see why this makes a huge difference over here on this side. Okay. So twenty-four and four. Okay, is 28 plus 7 is 35 plus 2 is 37. Now we're, we don't pay payroll tax on the health insurance, so we're just going to add the dollar fifty. Okay, so what's here, what's uh, Austin with family? Okay, that's, so that's without kids, right? That's without kids. So here's the deal. If Hunter came to me tomorrow and wanted to put his wife and baby on the health insurance, what do him and I got to talk about? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he has to take a $7 an hour pay cut, but here's where the rubber hits the road. If I got carefree Austin, and Austin with a family, is it fair for me to give this to Austin with a family? Well, he needs health insurance, so I'm going to give it to him. If I'm going to pay these guys equally, what one of one of two things has to happen if care if Austin with family gets on the health insurance? I got two choices to make this fair. I cut his pay seven, or I do what? Pay him seven more. Or I raise him seven. Those are the only two ways this stays fair. I cannot have employees on the health insurance getting paid the same as employees that aren't on the health insurance for the same job. It's not fair. Now most places, they don't even talk about this, but it's a very real cost for the company, right? So I'll give you an example. We had a, a friend of mine that was talking about coming to work here, but he wanted to put a family of four on the health insurance. And I just started doing some math and we figured out he was gonna be making about 50 bucks an hour. And he's got less experience than Elena. So what did I have to tell him? Sorry, man. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work, bud, unless you wanna pay you know, I mean, I could hire him, but he would have to pay his family share of the... We will always cover employee, and usually we will cover employee plus spouse or employee plus kid. Like, you, you roll up in here with seven kids and two wives, we got to talk, man. That's a huge cost, right? Okay, so what? the reason I bring this up, like, why are we talking about health insurance? When you look at the box there, at the dollar bracket, what do you got to put in? This is a very real number for us. Yeah. We pay this, guys. Like this comes out of the company bank account. Every month on the 10th, they take out five Gs right now. I could easily double that number if everybody got on the health insurance. More than double it. Now look, if Elena comes to me and says, hey, Jace lost his job and I need to get on the health insurance, are we going to let Elena go without health insurance? 
No, we're going to get her on the health insurance. Okay, but is there a cost to that? Yes, there is a cost, right? And like, look, Brian was a, is a vet, okay? And he's on the government's health insurance till he dies. That's a great deal for me. Thank you, Brian. Okay, but what that means is if Brian is not on the insurance and Danny has Danny and Elaine on the insurance, can Danny and Elaine, can Danny and Brian make the same money? They do the same job. No, I have to pay Brian more. In theory, Brian should get paid more because Danny is taking compensation through health insurance. And by the way, if you're getting, the, here's, here's, this is the screwed up, th screwed up part that we do in America. This is tax free. You don't get taxed on your health insurance benefits. If I go over here and give the $7 an hour to the employee, guess what Carefree Austin has to do? Pay taxes. You gotta pay taxes on that. So at some point you have a financial incentive to just be on the health insurance because you don't pay taxes for that compensation, right? So Austin should go out and get married and have a kid maybe, right? So what the reason I bring that up is like, if you're on the insurance, you're already getting a sweetheart deal because that compensation is not being taxed. Which by the way, when you get to my wage bracket, that, that savings is about 35%. So ultimately, if I'm paying across the board like this, Austin's not taking home that five. This person's getting seven dollars an hour with the health insurance, and he he's getting taxed. He's only getting about five dollars of the benefit. But that's roughly how that works. Okay. So this is a pretty big difference if you think about this. This is almost a bracket. It's almost a ten dollar an hour bracket. Right. So if for some reason Hunter came in and said, Serena doesn't want to be a school teacher anymore, we need to get on the insurance, that's okay. I can put I will put him on the insurance, but we gotta have a conversation, don't we? Because mm -hmm. we gotta figure out how do we make up this difference. We might be having that conversation in the car. Right? Because it's not fair to Nick. If Nick's not on the insurance and Hunter and Hunter's gonna get on the insurance, I can't just give give Hunter a seven dollar raise, seven dollar an hour raise and screw Nick. Because we got to remember, you got to go back to the goal of the system is what? Fair, yeah. transparent. So if I get my LS, I can just, and I can get on insurance. You can add the, the insurance and okay. basically keep the same right. hourly rate. All right. Right? That's the goal. Okay, so there you go. Look, I, do, I, do I wish that I lived in a world where health, health insurance wasn't $7 an hour? Yes. I wish I lived in a world. If it was $2 an hour, we wouldn't even worry about it because it's not big enough to make a difference. It's not. It's almost a full bracket. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So we covered a lot of ground. How do you guys feel? I have a solution to that. Tired? Yes. You just don't pay your employees. You don't give your employees enough hours to qualify for health insurance. Well, that's one of the reasons why before you get on the, on the benefit package, what do we want? Full time. Because if you got to remember, this cost goes way up per hour if I start spreading it over 20 hours. And if I spread it over 20 hours instead of 40, what happens to this dollar amount? Yeah. Now it doubles. Yeah. That's why Bree doesn't get health insurance. She works 20 hours a week. I would double. And now that's a $14 an hour pay difference. That's huge. That's why, as a general rule, most places you work, you don't get health insurance unless you're full time. Look, I worked at Safeway in Montana. You could get health insurance if you work 24 hours a week. Mm -hmm. We had people that worked that job just to get the health insurance. Starbucks too. Yeah, they didn't care about the money. It was just the health insurance. That was why they were there. Now, one of the things that we have on our list of stuff to look at, we haven't looked at it yet, but we we may look into some high deductible health insurance plans. We'll offer that as an option to an employee. Where um, you know whatever you 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 pay the first five grand of your medical bills for the year and then they cover everything after, but it's significantly less expensive because I may have an employee that comes to me and says, "Hey, I'd rather take that money cash. I'm pretty healthy." Like, look, do you think I use twelve hundred? Monique and I use twelve hundred dollars a month in health in medical stuff. Hey, I haven't done that my whole life, yeah. right? Okay, so in in if I wasn't married to Monique, who's a paranoid nut about everything. <laughs> right? I would probably take a high deductible health insurance plan because all I need to worry about is if I get in a car accident or get cancer, right? Like I barely like I, I see the doctor once a year. Like I spend hundred and fifty dollars a year in, in medical stuff, but I pay 
whatever, 14 grand a year in, in health ex insurance, right? So we may at some point, it's on Monique's list of things to do, we may check out some high deductible plans and offer those as an option. If I've got an employee that says, hey, I'm, uh, you know, like Austin. Austin probably doesn't want to pay full boat. He may not want to pay full boat for deluxe plan. He doesn't need it. He's like, hey, I'm 20 years old. I'm healthy. Like, I'll take the high deductible plan and take that compensation cash. That would probably be a smart move for him. Now, I can't let you guys just not have health insurance because what does Obamacare say? You gotta have health insurance. You have to have it. Okay, but we may be able to find a high deductible plan that meets the requirement and allows you to put that cash in your pocket. I'm like, who am I gonna let make that decision? I'm not gonna nanny you. You're big enough to you're big enough to make that decision for yourself. Now, right now we don't have that option. Right now it's like we got really great health insurance, and if you want on, you're gonna pay. Right? So, but but as more, you know, as you guys get older and start, you know, Elena's getting married, Hunter's having babies, you guys get older, you're you're gonna wanna get on the insurance and then I need to have some options, right? So we're, you know, we gotta think about that as owners, okay? So that's just the reason I brought that up is you gotta put that in the box. You gotta think about where that, where that puts you in the box, okay? All right, any questions? We covered a lot. You guys good? I got a lot of work to do, so I, I need some, I gotta work on some job descriptions. I need to get a list of specializations done. We're gonna be trying to add stuff to the learning library. Okay, so you all have a homework assignment on your next monthly look ahead, what do you need to talk to your principal about? Your Professional development, development plan. plan. Yeah, you need to get a plan. What are you weak on? You know, get your job description, evaluate for yourself what you're weak on, visit with your principal about it, come up with a plan. And like, everybody should do what Elena has done. Like, I have 10 modules to add to the learning library for Elena, right? She gave me a list of 10 things. I think some, I think most of them are gonna be, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 minute videos Maybe that I need to do for her. Yeah, I will. Yeah, no, I have it. Okay, but everybody should have, you should have a list of what you need to do. Okay, did I clear up the confusion about how the job description works with the PDH plan and how our share matches your share, yeah. hopefully? Yeah, it's a good system, I think. I've put a lot of thought into it. I've worked, ve I've worked very, very hard to do this for you guys, right? So, now here's what I don't want. Part of the reason we're happy part of the reason we're tape recording this is, do I want Bree or Michaela to walk into an annual skill review in six months and be upset that they're not getting their raise? No. No, I, so it's important that you guys understand you gotta do your match, right? We, we gotta do your match, and you guys are all working on it. You know, everybody's either working on their pilot cert or their CST or their LSIT, but I, we want you guys to do your match. Right now, look, I, I've tried to break that rule because I've just got a big heart and my partner slapped me around and said, we're not gonna let you do that. You have to make everybody play by the rules, okay? So I have to play by the rules. Brian and Dan are gonna make me. Because guess what, if it was up to me, what I'd probably just do every year? Pay raises all around. I'd probably just pay everybody because that's the kind of guy I am, right? But that's probably not healthy. I mean, do you think what we're asking of you guys is unreasonable? No. Yeah, you... you you described this as incentivizing it. That's exactly, that's the best, yeah. that's the best term. You know, I need, I need an hour or two a week. Yeah. You guys to invest in your own skill set. And we're already, look, even if you don't want to participate in the program, you could work here for three to five years and go get a great job. Because what kind of investment are we putting in you on the job? Yeah, yeah. A huge investment, right? So even if you never participate in the PDH program, you can work here, learn a skill, and be pretty much set for life, right? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Stetson. So, question on the development menu. You yeah. Have book chapter is a lesson. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm studying for my PS exam. Yeah. So, do I just document every chapter I read? Or? No. What you no. What you do is you come, you sit down with your principal, which would be Danny, and you say, Danny, I want to work through Browns. Okay. Okay. And then you get one of those sheets for every chapter of Browns that you're going to work through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Because I want to evaluate that you are actually learning what you're reading. Yeah, okay. And if you look at this, if you look at the, at the example yeah. on the learning card, the first, like, the first few questions are multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those are, those are just like, did you understand the key concepts and the definitions? The last two or three questions are going to really force you to flip your brain on. I want to see if you can connect the concepts you learned in that module with the other things we do here at work. 
Okay. Okay, so that requires a little deeper thinking. So like, look, I don't want robots that regurgitate facts. I want you to learn what you what, what's in the module and I want you to be able to apply it to your job. That's the whole point, right? I have a question. Yes. So we're talking about um, our personal individual investment into our into our career development mm -hmm. program. If I were to say if I were to pay for a PS prep course like through Nettleman, right? I would pay for that cost and that would contribute toward my side of, okay, of yeah. the ledger. So like, so what I would tell you is please don't do that. The company will pay for it. The way you earn the points is by doing it on your time. Oh, okay. Yeah, like we'll pay for the course, Nick. That's a lot of money though. Well, but I mean, you work at a good company. I'll pay for the course. You want to get your pilot cert? We'll pay for the course. Okay, that I can't pay everybody two days a week to sit here and study, right? We yeah. just can't. Okay, but but as when it comes to course material, like you don't have to buy the book, you don't have to pay for the course. We will do that. Elena, what did I just send you this week? Do you remember? I bought a course. What was it? Oh, it was the. Um... I bought her an Inkscape course. She's like, I haven't looked at it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a full, it's a full, it's a full, it's, a full, it's like two weeks really worth of odd. two weeks worth of videos. I just I saw it online. I was like, you know what? That'd be cool because she's one of the few people that knows Inkscape. So I sent it. I bought it and sent it to her and Bree. Said, when you got time, watch this. Okay, we will pay for that stuff, right? What 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 I can't afford to do is just pay for all the labor, right? Yeah, Labor's yeah. the most expensive thing we do here, right? So yeah, we do. We still do Fantastic First Fridays. Right, and we still do a ton of on-the-job training, right? But here's here's part of the reason this is important. We didn't talk about is take a guy like Angelo. Okay. Yeah, I mean he's 18 years old. He is so much more employable than your average 18 year old right now. Yeah. Like that guy knows basic AutoCAD and he can run a total station. I mean that is. I mean how many 18 year old kids know how to do that? Right? I mean, he is way, like, he should just get me the greatest uncle ever cup. Like, right? Like, he just, he's just, he's way ahead of everybody else. He could go be a good union general. Yeah, I mean, he just, okay, but let's, now, here's why this program is important. So, if you think about the, 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 the job description, does he have, is he, is he heavy on the knowledge side or the skill side? The skill side. He's heavy on the skill side. What is he missing? Knowledge. Conceptual knowledge. So, part of the flaw with our system here, okay, with the exception of Mr. Stetson, we do not hire graduates from four-year university programs. We just, that's not our business model. I'm not saying we won't ever do it, but as a general rule, I am not at the Fresno State Career Fair. Okay, I told somebody this in a meeting this week and they got all bent out of shape. They got all offended. They were probably a Fresno grad. Okay, but I told him. I, I told him. I said, "Look, as a general rule, if you're an LSIT coming out of the Fresno State program, you're not worth your money." Well, to be fair, you're not hiring them directly out of graduation. But like, I was like here and right for him. Yeah, no, you're yeah. different. You're an exception. Brian's yeah. got a master's degree. There are exceptions yeah. to the rule. What I'm saying is, here's what I've learned as an employer. It <clears throat> there's ten graduates a year out of the Fresno State Surveying Program. Who wants those grads, Brian? The big companies. Yeah, every serving company in California is down there trying to fight for those grads. Right? Now, that would be okay, except what have I learned about most graduates of a four-year degree program and their ability to function in the real world? Yeah, very, very confident. confident. Yeah, they <laughs> tend to be overconfident. Like they, like I'm not, and I'm not picking on Hunter. No, I, had no, no. A, I had a good friend of mine who's a licensed surveyor now. Came out of Fresno State, couldn't write a paragraph. I was like, "How did you make it through college?" He said, "Well, I was in a math major." Right? Okay. So I've learned the hard way that typically I, I don't hire college graduates for, of four-year degree programs as a general rule because I overpay. Because the education system is not delivering the value that I need as an employer. Now, there's an exception to that. Like, I'm going to hire Bree. Okay, but like, guess what? Before I hire Bree, like, when I hire Bree, by the time she graduates, she's going to have a year and a half of practical real world experience here. And I know what I'm getting with that girl. Like, I'm going to let you know a little secret for, about Bree. She was smart before she went to college. Okay? And I knew that. 
Okay? So now, because I don't tend to hire college grads of four-year degree programs, Elena, do you have a four-year degree? Nick, do you have a four-year degree? Austin, do you have a four-year degree? Does Michaela have a four-year degree? Does Cameron, does Angelo? None of you guys have four-year degrees. Okay, so here's the flaw in that system. Because most of your training is on the job, are you skill heavy or knowledge heavy? Skill heavy. You're almost all skill heavy and knowledge light. In other words, you learn how to push the buttons, but sometimes you lack the conceptual knowledge. Right, so Angelo's a good example. That guy can run a total station like a ninja. I don't know that he fully grasps coordinate geometry like you should. Right? Okay, so part of what this program does, professional development program does, is force you guys to do what on your own time? Get the conceptual get the knowledge. knowledge. Go get the conceptual knowledge that I can't give you. Can I give you that knowledge on the job easily? Not easily. No. We do a little bit of it on like Fantastic First Fridays. Or you guys, you know, I like to shoot the bull. When you guys have a question, sometimes I go off on a tangent and I teach you a little bit of the conceptual knowledge. But we just do not have a structured way to deliver that here through on-the-job training. Right? And so that's part of the why we set the program up was to get, like in order for Angelo to make progress here, what is he occasionally going to have to do at home on a Friday evening? Study, study. Crack a book or watch a video to learn a little bit about what it is, that the, the, the concepts and theories behind what it is that he does and you, you, every day. You do need that conceptual knowledge to get your CST or your yeah, LSAT. Yeah, you need it. But like, here's the thing. What kind of team am I going to have in three years? Crack Smoking team. team the best. Yeah. We'll have the best. We're going to have the best team in Central California, best survey team. I don't have doubt about it. Don't you think, Brian? There won't be anybody even close. Yeah, we'll be crushing it.